Recording in progress. Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to another session of COVID Diaries. I would request everyone to kindly mute their audios and put off their videos. And um, today is another interesting session. Today, usually we have two teachers and today we have three teachers sharing about their experiences and knowledge. And uh, let's see what is in their COVID Diaries for us today. Our first speaker for today is Dr. Zubair Patel. Uh, Dr. Zubair is, uh, practices an integrative medicine practitioner and it's been more than 15 years of experience in traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture and traditional medic medical acupuncture at Prana. A very warm welcome, sir. And we really hope to learn something interesting from you today. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Hope I am audible. Yes, sir. Okay, great. All right, so let's dive into our topic for today. I'll just keep my video off so it doesn't lag. Great. So I'm going to talk about traditional medical acupuncture in the management of COVID. So traditional medical acupuncture, let me tell you, is basically acupuncture with medical investigation, model medical investigations, and we see how the disease progresses and do the treatment accordingly. Okay, so our agenda for the day is going to be, uh, what is COVID? What is the pathophysiology behind it? the oriental medicine or acupuncture perspective and the supportive or home care that can be done in the management of COVID. So COVID-19 called a severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2. The transmission, uh, we now know everything about it, we could say still there is research going on. So transmission is through respiratory droplet and aerosol and it affects the different parts of the respiratory system depending on the stage and severity of the infection. Severe infection causes ARDS, that is acute respiratory distress syndrome, or it could also lead to death. And that mainly is because of the severe damage to the lung parenchyma. So what is the disease pathophysiology? Let's uh, have a look. 
So it goes through different stages. First, when the virus enters the system, it's going to be through the nose. If we inhale the virus, which then binds to the nasal epithelial cells, specifically the ACA2, which is the host receptor for the virus. The virus load, understand at this point, is low, but the host or person who's infected is highly infectious. They can pass it on to others very easily. The immune response might be limited, but in spite of the low viral load and immune response, they do show positive on the RT-PCR test. From this asymptomatic stage where they could be a problem to others and spread the infection, they the virus then goes down to the upper respiratory tract. Here, there is a greater immune response, which is due to the release of the cytokine, chemokine ligands and interferon from the virus infected cells. Now, because of this immune response, the infection is kept under control and majority of the patients, they do not progress to the third stage or the virus does not go to the lower respiratory tract. The issue starts for the host when the virus enters the lower respiratory tract, the lungs. It starts first affecting the type 2 alveolar epithelial cells through the, again, host receptor that is ACE2. The virus starts replicating and it produces more viral nuclear capsids. I need to explain uh, this so that we can understand the disease pathophysiology and give the treatment accordingly. So the, the treatment varies depending on the stage or which part of the body the virus has entered. So once the virus starts replicating, it produces more viral nucleocapsids, which then affect the type 2 alveolar epithelial cells or what we call type 2 pneumocytes. And they release many inflammatory markers and cytokines like uh, interleukins to interferons, TNFs, monocytes. And this is what causes the inflammatory marker cytokine storm. Cytokine storm is what we also call as CRS, cytokine release syndrome. Now, when these inflammatory markers are released, they also attract a lot of other cells which help to fight the infection like neutrophils, the CD4 helper T cells and CD8 cytotoxic T cells, which then begin to get sequestered in the lungs. Now these cells, they are responsible for fighting the virus, yes, but in the process, they cause a lot of inflammation and injury to the cells and this Constant process of infection, fighting, and injury to the epithelial cells is was what causes the loss of our type 2 monocytes, new, sorry, new, uh, pneumocytes, and the whole parenchymal tissue might get damaged, which is actually what ultimately leads to your acute respiratory distress syndrome, the ARDS. Now, why we need to understand is it's finally a respiratory tract infection, lung infection, and any condition that is to do with the lungs, medically we tend to classify it in some way. Is it an obstructive or a restrictive disorder? So that is the big question we need to understand. And that is what is going to be how we treat the infection. So first we'll talk about the immune response that is a cyto cytokine storm. The cytokine release syndrome basically manifests in a lot of ways. You have hypotension, hypoxia, fever, fatigue, myalgia, malaise, nausea, hypoxia, coagulopathy, capillary leakage, tachycardia, tachypnea, 
and macrophage activation syndrome, host of other things. It causes organ toxicity, pulmonary edema, pneumocytes, and renal insufficiency. So basically what we are looking over here is a severe anaphylactic reaction and multiple organ failure. So CRS, though it's not just limited to uh, COVID, it could happen in other conditions as well, but here we are looking at specifically the COVID response. And when all these things, so, so here the presentation is more like a COPD patient where it's a severe anaphylactic reaction and the person might go into a bronchospasm or it could lead to a multiple organ failure. Now, when all these responses subside, the damage to the lung tissue might be permanent. And this loss of lung parenchy parenchyma is what would happen in, say, a case of fibrosis or tuberculosis. So here, if you look at it, we've got both the presentation. That of an obstructive pulmonary disorder and a restrictive. So I have also put in radiographs for you to understand better. So that's how a severe asthma COPD radiograph would look like. The X-ray of a miliary tuberculosis patient. And one over here is a person who is having acute respiratory distress syndrome. So we need to understand the stages and do the treatment accordingly. Now coming to my area of expertise, acupuncture. Uh, many of us might be knowing acupuncture. It involves use of needles at specific points. We poke needles, uh, but it's not just limited to pricking or poking pins. It also involves other therapies. One of them is cupping, specifically fire cupping when it comes to uh, COVID patients. So cupping generally, uh, the regular cupping is placing these cups on the body and sucking out the air with the vacuum gun. What you can see over here are glass cups, but uh, in regular cupping, we use fiber cups with a hole on the top and a valve system. So we put, attach a gun and we suck the air out. And that is what anchors the cup onto the body. But in fire cupping, what we do is we create vacuum by placing a wick, burning wick inside the cup just for a second and take it out. And that is what burns the air inside and creates a vacuum. Immediately you place it onto the body. So it is not just the cupping. It is also the heat that, that is supplied to that particular part. So fire cupping is what I have seen is very effective in COVID patients. As we go further, I'll tell you more about it. The other thing that I have found highly effective is moxibution. Mo this is done with the help of a moxa roll. It's a small moxa roll with support. So what is moxa? You might be aware, you might be using the plant Artemisia vulgaris. So moxa roll is nothing but Artemisia vulgaris, powdered like tobacco and tightly bound into a roll like a cigar. So what we do is light one end of the cigar or the moxa roll and give heat on those specific acupuncture points. And mind you, it's just heat. We don't touch the moxa tip to the body, we don't burn them. We're just giving heat. So the heat could be either through the roll or place it this way, or we keep it on the top of a needle. We also get smokeless moxa rolls for uh, people who are allergic to smoke. And here with uh, COVID, we need to be careful in what way their lungs are affected. So generally I use the smokeless moxa. So these are the the other therapies that we do, which is a part of acupuncture, one being fire cupping, the other being moxa. So 
what we need to see is what are the aims of treatment in acupuncture accordingly we will do the further treatment so first there are the general aims and then you have specific aims general what we are looking is to improve the energy levels of the lungs doesn't matter what stage we are at we also need to improve the general health of the patient or the host specific when we come to that finally the treatment aim during active infection is completely opposite to the recovery stage in the active infection or stage 1 2 we need to suppress the inflammatory process and severe allergic responses and from the acupuncture perspective if you see what we we are trying to do is we need to cool down the system but in the recovery stage beyond stage 3 we need to heat the system there's a lot of stasis and stuck energy in the lungs and in the entire body we need to release that so we need to supply heat or we need to heat the system so i am talking about acupuncture and i'm talking about uh, cupping and moksha what exactly does acupuncture do that is the question that might be arising in a lot of people's minds so acupuncture let me tell you in brief is the therapeutic basis of acupuncture is that the human body has life force energy called chi in uh, chinese flowing through the body we indians call this energy as pran shakti or prana so this chi or pran shakti this flows through the energy channels or meridians which and atomically if you see could be considered running parallel to the nerves or along fascial lines and each energy channel corresponds to a particular organ of the body i will show you two specific energy channels over here which are important from the covid point of view so the first is the lung channel because of course we are like dealing with the lungs so the lung channel it starts from the anterior chest wall lateral side and it ends on the thumb these points are the acupuncture points numbered 1 2 3 right till there are 11 points on the lung meridian the important points on the lung meridian i'm just going to tell you two first is lung 1 this is about uh, two palm width from the midline so the center of the midline the center of your sternum if you take measure two palm widths two palm face side by side you will reach a point almost towards the lateral part of the clavicle and about one thumb width just below the clavicle that is where lung 1 is so that's the clavicle over there this is lung 2 which is just under the clavicle and one thumb width below is lung 1 now this import this point is not just important from the therapeutic perspective in fact many a time we don't even use it for therapy because uh, being right above the lungs so there is a danger of puncturing the lungs of course with an experienced acupuncturist uh, that doesn't happen so it is used as a diagnostic point as well if it is unusually tender then it indicates that there is some problem with the lung and problem could be anything it could be infection allergy inflammation even ca but it is a sensitive point during the active infection stage so if there is a covid patient you don't know they have covid you just press this point it might be very tender patient might feel very uncomfortable when you press over here that is an indication that there is some problem some issue with the lung most likely it could be covid so we need to send them for testing now the other important point on the lung meridian is lung 9 it's very easy to find this point 
it is on the wrist crease and at the wrist crease you feel the pulsation of the radial artery it is just on the lateral side just outside the radial artery it is here between the abductor pollicis longus and the radial artery so just inside the tendon and just outside the artery it's very easy to locate now the other this is lung meridian the other meridian that i want to tell you about is the renmai meridian simply called as ren this meridian starts at the perineum and it ends below the lower lip the important points over here first point is ren 17 that is at the level of the fourth intercostal space on the sternum if you want to easily locate it we say it's between the nipples at the level of the nipples but uh, i would say not very accurate because uh, of the anatomical variations that people might have so the best is to palpate and feel the fourth intercostal space and it is right at the level of the fourth intercostal space the other point or set of points is ren 4 6 which is below the umbilicus the umbilicus is ren 8 so we are going below that and uh, i would say this whole area also it's like a seat of energy you stimulate the points over here and uh, you'll see the effect all along the channel and we are now looking at uh, the effect on the lung so these are the two important channels from the perspective of acupuncture so you will say okay we don't know to needle we are not acupuncturist what do we do but you should know these points and you can teach your patients to stimulate these points with pressure so the acupuncture points can be stimulated with a pointed blunt object so at that specific point you ask them to just massage it either with their thumb or with the back side of a pen something blunt but it should do the trick and when you actually try to press and stimulate this point you will know that you've hit the point correct because it will be a bit tender or uncomfortable we do fire capping on the upper back area which is again the lung area and we do moxa on the entire midline of the body so the midline of the body over here from your uh, pubic symphysis right till your uh, lower lip is the ren channel so we give moxa now the alternatives to fire cupping and moxa basically we need to supply heat this is all heat in post covid we are uh, now so in active cycle active stage we need to suppress the system sedate the system that is what we call in acupuncture and in post covid recovery we need to stimulate the system so i am giving you all stimulation points for the patients to recover because they are not going to come in active covid to you they'd be hospitalized so we are looking at the recovery stage so the alternatives to fire cupping is ask them to make a simple sack totally of herbs or sand uh, in india we use a sack of uh, ajwain so you could do that or just simply put sand in it and heat it on a uh, non stick pan so that that will again give heat to your specific acupuncture points to stimulate it a very simple trick i ask my patients to do is hot water bottle not the regular rubber bottles take a plastic or a glass bottle 1 liter bottle add hot water to it and keep it in the midline of your body so that is what is going to stimulate the ren channel and uh, try to keep it more in the area of uh, the fourth intercostal space that is the ren 17 point and right below the umbilicus area and for the ladies 
hair dryer is your best friend you could use a hair dryer to heat these points the range 17 and the points below the umbilicus loss of smell can be treated in the area along the ala of the nose so ala of the nose i'm just switching on my video is here so you could use a pointed object don't don't poke yourself with a pen so you could use a pointed object there and stimulate that point and also right here below the nose uh, below the nostril so these two points can be uh, treated with acupuncture uh, give pressure in these areas if you have loss of smell if you or your patients have loss of smell so these are certain things that you can teach your patients and uh, they will recover much faster and believe me this uh, hair dryer or hot water works magic in uh, post covid recovery so i am open to questions if someone has or i will hand over the session to my colleague dr harsh now i have also put uh, two slides over here of postural drainage so the lungs have different part different lobes and different lobes can be drained in different in different positions dr harsh will be taking up that topic so just for the sake of uh, like a prelude to the next session i have put these over here so that's all from my side okay so post covid fibrosis i've got a, a question over here yes so all these things the home care remedies that i spoke about are all for post covid fibrosis so uh, the hair dryer the water bottle the sack of herbs everything works uh, you could also use the sack of herbs uh, not just the center midline you could also use it right on the Uh, lung areas especially just above the nipple and below the nipple these are also important acupuncture points so okay someone's asked for the acupuncture point slide so this is one and that's the other one If anyone wants to ask a direct question please put it on the chat box pressure to be done for how much time 2 to 5 minutes multiple times in a day so i will now stop my screen share and uh, hand over the session to my colleague Dr. Harsh Kumar. He is an osteopath and physiotherapist, and uh, he'll be explaining to you about the things that you do from the osteopathy physiotherapy perspective and some fact myth busting. There is a question: How is acupuncture different from acupressure? Uh, well, the points are the same, but uh, instead of using needles, uh, we do pressure. of course there are different systems of acupressure and as well uh, on the hand and uh, on the palms and the feet uh, there is a different pressure system called sujo can uv light be used for heating another question uh, yes you can in fact uh, you can do it in different ways i know acupuncturist who use uh, laser as well for stimulating the acupuncture points so there is no it how you innovate and go about it so this, these two things the hot water bottle and the hair dryer are my personal innovations by the way okay thank you and uh, thanks for giving me a listening ear i will now hand over the session to dr harsh he is right here with me dr harsh please take over Okay. Good after, good evening to all. I'm Dr. Harsh from Prana, and 
I'm working in Prana from last two years as an, as an osteopath and chiropractor. My, I'm basically, I'm a physiotherapist and uh, I'm going to explain about uh, fact and myth and uh, role of osteopathy in COVID. So just a minute, I'm back to share my screen. So, okay, a role of osteopathy and physical medicine in COVID-19, fact and myth. So, since we all are from medical field and, and fighting with this COVID-19 situation from last one and a half year, and I would not uh, go into much deep about the pathophysiology and the reaction and all these things. We have already know, and Dr. Zubair has already well discussed about these things. So, I'm directly jump into the fact and myth very common thing. Reason behind this, patient when we come to our patients, so uh, apart from emergency medical situation, apart from only medical situation, uh, they ask what can we do at our place and what should be done by us at our home. So we would like to talk about on these things. The, So direct to the point, few things are the most important in COVID pandemic. There is some problem with Okay, so direct to the point, a few things are the most important COVID pandemic, the immune system or the defense system, fear, support, treatment, and the rehabilitation. Immune system, fact or need, it starts from the day of birth, like mother feed of the baby. And the myth is we provide synthetic milk to improve immunity. What happened when a baby born, we jump to the pediatrician and start taking that kind of things like vaccinations, a lot of, lot of, lot of vaccinations and how to improve the health. And in Indian scenario, what we believe is the baby is gaining weight means baby is healthy. We do not bother about the activity, what kind of activity baby is doing. If the baby is gaining weight means baby is healthy. It's wrong. We should bother about the activity, should not bother about the weight. So weight is provided by the synthetic milk and the activity is provided by the mother's feet. The immune system is developed by the mother's feet, not by the synthetic milk. Another fact is from your kitchen, like ginger, black pepper, tulsi, haldi, and other spices, they improve your immunity. You can you can take it, you can 
take them direct or you can take them as a kadha or tea or something but myth kya hai hum log we use different kind of drug composition to boost immunity this is totally wrong especially any kind of chemical drug uh, drug composition with which, which uh, claim that ki it improved immunity abhi to uh, everything is come for a, as a immunity booster it's wrong the third fact is normal filtered boiled water we should use normal filtered boil or boiled water instead of that the myth is using ro uv mineral tagged water drinking that we are doing the best or i'm just watching we ought we think we are drinking a bisleri or the ro water or the uv water we are wasting or we are deteriorating our defense system definitely so use boiled water that is the best thing another fact is clean yourself and nearby area that is basic cleanliness is required it is not required to sanitize each and every part every time four times a day ye blah 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 this is very wrong just to clean yourself and nearby area and that is enough and the myth is we put ourselves in the pool of sanitizer and ocean of extra hygiene and surrounding this is very very wrong ultimately we have to immune we have to increase the immune system we have to boost the immune system we have we have to uh, prepare the immune system to fight with other things not only with corona we have to uh, teach how to fight fact and need don't take antibiotic till 3 days and wait for fever to step down and let the body build the defense system but the myth is we do two antibiotics as a time we start the antibiotics on the very first day which is wrong we have to wait let the body fight with the things do not stop the fight do not do not try to spoon feed the immune system we should hum apne bachcho ke sath bhi yahi karte hain second thing is fear and support what is fear and support fact you need basic concern only should not fear with anything like i accept the covid 19 is there and we should take precautions social distancing and all these things but it doesn't mean we start fearing with covid 19 the myth is double mask what about the o2 we are using double triple six layer eight layer 16 layer 100 layer mask and we are we need o2 and we are taking ourselves away from the o2 we are taking ourselves away from the vital energy so it's like it's not like that instead of having fear a double mask we should just avoid it use mask it is necessary i know but it does not mean that make yourself away from the o2 fact is old is gold wash hands after bladder and bowel and uh, food it's not in india but outside of india maybe because of the lack of water i think so they use hand paper and all these things for after food and, 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 and even after blood and bowel activity in india it's at least we are uh, we we feel that old is gold the myth is wash hand every hour with this and so on the abhi to each and every advertisement of soap and uh, other thing they are they are saying that wash your hand again and again 20 second 30 second 20 hour keep on washing your hand it's not like that just wash your hand after 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 your basic use like uh, blood and bowel and food after this only you can have the bacterial contamination only na otherwise it's okay it is okay um, mild amount of bacterial uh, insertion is acceptable by the body and it should be there as i already said let the body create our own defense system okay the fact is stay positive and take take necessary steps to avoid infections this is fact stay positive and take necessary step like theek hai uh, if it is situation like covid 19 don't go out much if you go out going out after coming back to home wash your hand once only theek hai okay change your cloth instead of the fact myth is sanitize each and everything twice a day we are more towards like chemical again so it should not be there 
the most last and the most about peer and support support your family and friends if a patient yeah. with covid 19 we isolate them bachna to kisi ko bhi nahi hai so we should support our family and friend isolation is important but doesn't mean we should not talk we should not see we should not like isolate properly kar diya that is myth ab aata hai role of phys- physical medicine so there is again a fact and uh, myth about physiotherapy the fact is it should be active breathing exercise without exertion to the patient myth is no forceful breathing uh like i have seen many physiotherapists they keep on giving passive physio chest physiotherapy tapping cupping vibration and all these things over the chest there is no mucus my dear there is no mucus active mucus in the lungs viral loading mein mucus nahi hota hai it is in bacterial loading so if the patient underwent to the bacterial loading then mucus will be there only but don't try to exert the patient already he need or she need oxygen if you are tapping will increase the demand of oxygen we have to in, we have to stop the demand we have to preserve the demand we have to preserve the oxygen so should not be there and the very gentle touch to appreciate the breath like diaphragmatic breath is good the myth is postural drainage in acute stage okay the postural drainage in post covid rehab is okay but we should not give the postural drainage in acute stage again the myth tapping cupping and vibration to the chest it is bad very very bad we should avoid the thing if i talk about the osteopathy part there is no myth in osteopathy it's a very gentle touch therapy the cranial osteopathy and the diaphragm release so what is osteopathy we should a little bit know we should all know about the osteopathy it's a holistic philosophy based on soft manual therapeutic procedures osteopathy says body is a unit that means the problem and the symptoms they both differ from each other it means there is a key reason which may be different from the symptomatic reason it is not necessarily the pain in the shoulder uh, the, the shoulder is shoulder pain is there so we have to treat the shoulder only we have to look at the thoracic case we have brief case we have to look at the liver dysfunction and all so it, it can be there as an osteopath apart from targeting the key lesion we should we also believe the neutralizing the body physiology and let the body fight the problem itself again as i said we should create we should improve the defense system or the immune system we are not targeting towards improvising the immune system we are just targeting towards the treatment treatment and treatment it's wrong aaj corona hai kal kuch aur aayega to kya karenge so we have to improve the immune system so osteopathy itself does not treat the covid 19 it just create the body defense system it helps to create the body immune system and defense system it is just uh, like uh, we have to shut down the body and restart it that is rebooting okay so body, body physiology altered ho chuki hai we have to make the neutral so that is osteopathy so how osteopathy does help is like diaphragmatic release and other thing like diaphragm release again the how to release the diaphragm there are two techniques and diaphragm release uh, what how it helps there are two or three procedures like this is for upper Uh, like upper uh, upper uh, upper segment of the lungs this is the diaphragm especially at the lower rib cage this is again the diaphragm release in sitting position we are very soft gentle touch and pull of the diaphragm up to just stimulate the diaphragm let the diaphragm work in a proper way what are the benefits of the diaphragm a gentle touch provide the support to the patient again the same line and the pull causes activation of mechanical receptors nearby the area which further lead to improve the circulation chest pain improve action of diaphragm which will improve breathing okay so as i said we are not treating the covid 19 we just helping the breathing and uh, improve the circulation the cranial osteopathy we just again fear and anxiety ko kam karne ke liye again oa release it is a procedure of neutralizing the cranial rhythm and csf flow 
which will increase the cranial blood flow in turn improve the body physiology again i said we are not treating we are just neutralizing the body physiology this is again the vault compression it's a procedure again of cranial osteopathy so we just release the anxiety and improve the blood circulation nearby area the benefits of this is reduce anxiety and fear improve tsf flow lower down the sympathetic autonomic nervous system again dur fear auto sympathetic autonomic nervous system activate the vagus nerve activate the parasympathetic nervous system vagus nerve is parasympathetic nervous system improve healing and reboot the physiology of body so that this is how we should improve the thing so any questions uh, this is how we deal with osteopathy with the covid patient so any question from your side people it is short uh, conversation between us and uh, okay so is this cairo craniosacral yes it is craniosacral therapy as well we we all know that as a craniosacral therapy yes this uh, you know about the craniosacral therapy it's a holistic science again yes any other any other question you people want to ask since i said osteopathy is not the treatment for corona it's a maintenance only okay so i don't think so any question from you people i hope you enjoyed the session and uh, thank you so much okay we are leaving the meeting bye bye thank you so much dr harsh and thank you so much dr zubair i think uh, it's very interesting to see uh, how holistic healing can be done through acupuncture and osteopathy and uh, it's beautiful that these these are being practiced at prana so thank you so much sir for sharing your knowledge uh, so you. we thank have you. one question about uh, can we see the cranial figure again sir sure. also if any of the participants would want to go back and see these things the recordings are available on facebook as we have a facebook live and a youtube live as well is it is it visible the cranial figure yes sir this is the uh, there are uh, i am discussing about only two things the ovary release and the vault compression there are more than 20 cranial hold uh, uh, which will improve the suture function which will improve which is improve the separate bone function like for sphenoid for frontal for temporal for parietal for occipital there are different different hold and different different technique it's a basic thing what i am uh, because of short period of time i am explaining the basic thing this is again the vault hold cranial osteopathy it is also called as craniosacral therapy yes okay okay so any other question you people want to ask or any other thing you want to repeat hmm uh so there's a question for dr uh, zubair mm -hmm. about uh, is it possible to have moxa on a daily basis yes the very good doctor zubair will answer yeah hi uh, there is a dosage to it not advisable to take it for a long time once your uh, system is rebooted once you got better think uh, you should stop it great sir thank you so much thank you so much dr zubair thank you so much dr harsh okay. and uh, moving on to our next speaker we have dr sonali with us dr sonali bosle uh, she is a homeopath with 20 years of experience and 14 years of experience in teaching 
Uh, she has been a researcher in uh, studying the efficiency of homeopathy and yoga in traumatic conditions, uh, homeopathy and yoga for knee care, and also the COVID-19 project, and also as a treating physician during the COVID-19. She uh, is a speaker at lectures for homeopaths, uh, for awareness programs for patients, and corporate events on wellness and mindfulness. She is the founder member and senior homeopathic consultant at Prana Center, Pune. Uh, she is also a doctor at the online portal at Dr. Shankaran's clinic consultant. And she is a mentor for courses at the Other Song International Academy of Advanced Homeopathy. Uh, she has a clinic in Pune, which is called Homeopathy for All. And she's an ex faculty in Materia Medica at Bharatiya with the Pete Homeopathic Medical College. She is a physician, an educationist, a researcher, a mentor. I mean, this is a power fact uh, introduction, Ram. A very warm welcome. We are very, very glad to have you here today. And I think all the participants are very curious to learn from you. Uh, yeah. Am I unmuted? Uh, yes, ma'am, you're audible. Yeah. Harleen, thank you so much. You know, it has really uh, built a pressure on me now to give a lecture. <laughs> thank you, Harleen. Uh, thank you, Zubair and uh, Harsh for a wonderful session to give it a holistic perspective. Uh, because in COVID, a lot of things needs to be addressed. It's not only the case and as homeopaths, what we do, but how in the most holistic way we can help uh, our patients and ourselves too, definitely. So, my topic is about PQRS and yeah, and I, I, I see it as in every case or in every person rather, what is unique, what is different. And from there, my entry point in the case or that, that begins as my entry point in the case. So in aphorism number 153, Hanuman has put it, the most striking, singular, uncommon, peculiar signs and symptoms of the case. You know, not only the symptoms, but also the signs. At times, we pay less attention to the signs. And I feel in the COVID, COVID has made us very, um, you know, we were quite alert to see all the signs also along with symptoms. Signs and symptoms of the case are chiefly and the most solely to be kept in view, for it is more particularly that very similar ones must correspond. So if it is not the all whole case correspond, but the striking peculiar signs and symptoms corresponds, and that should be the match to the remedy. And that can help us in quick prescriptions in acutes. So, yeah, symptomatically, we all know the symptoms of cough, fever, weakness, breathlessness, anosmia, myalgia, throat complaints, anorexia, abdominal complaints, diarrhea, or there were people with mild symptoms like seasonal flu, or there were representation with no symptoms at all. And people are wondering, what are you telling me? I don't have COVID. I mean, because I don't have any symptoms. So even we treated uh, these kind of people at, you know, with different presentations. So the signs which we mostly saw was dip in oxygen saturation, collapse and weakness. Let me share with you the case. This was in the uh, month of March, I think, yeah. February, March, where I received a call from Jalna. She was 62 year old lady admitted with breathlessness on talking, difficulty in standing with tremors, with fear of falling, not able to walk with feeling as if I will fall, no energy at all, not able to stand, not able to sit too, no appetite no desire to have any food and not able to talk due to weakness. How it all started? For four to five days, 
I had fever and in fever had lot of dry cough with pain in ribs. I was not able to bear the heat in fever. It was high fever with sensation of heat with tremendous weakness. No thirst. Taste was bitter, very bitter. And due to that, I'm not able to have a sip of water. For 15 days, I really did not had water. Almost thirstless with dry mouth. So, when I asked, how does this complaint affect you? What is the effect of this on you? I'm not interested in anything, not talking to anybody. I'm very sick of the cough. So much weakness with breathlessness. I'm not even able to walk. Fear of falling. She repeats again the same thing. I'm so weak I have become. I have to hold on to something. I asked any perspiration, any discharges. No perspiration. Though such high fever, it's absolute heat I am experiencing. Okay. Will you like to sleep? How is your sleep? No sleep, doctor. Suddenly I get up in the midnight or by after one or so. And I keep worrying. How was the things at home? About children, how are they? I feel so weak. Tell me more. I feel very lonely here. She was hospitalized in Jalna and she was feeling very lonely there. She told us, there's darkness here, there are no lights. I fear darkness. I'm not able to sleep at night due to fear. I have fear with heaviness in my chest. It is constricting. As I control my tears, I'm quite tearful, fearful. I feel weakness in my body. Any listening to any bad thing also, I feel very weak. Loss of power from the body with vertigo. So tell me, you know, what can we take as characteristic, as PQRS? You can share in half a minute or so. What should we do? Because in acute, they speak everything which is bothering them the most. You can see in chats. Okay, my voice is low. I'll speak louder. Yeah. So, should I go ahead, Harleen? Fever, perspiration, without. Correct. Anything more? Fear. Fear. Weak. Hearing bad news. Yes. Correct. Anything more? Come on. You are supposed to be awake. Dryness of mouth. Yes. Dryness of mouth. Dry mouth but thirstless. Bitter taste. Yeah. Very good. So I need a remedy which should be covering this. Fatigue, anxiety, not able to sleep due to weakness. Not due to weakness, it was due to the fear. I'm so fearful. My God, darkness, I'm alone here. Like that. Vertigo. Vertigo was with loss of power. Hmm. Anxiety for family was there, but what is the most prominent? What is the most peculiar? Yes. Cardiac system, any issue? Cardiac system, yeah. Uh, she definitely, she is having COVID pneumonia. So, you know, cardiac, that way she was stable, but these symptoms are suddenly developed. Hmm. Constriction in chest with tears. She is fearful, no? So she was trying to weep, but she, nobody is there and she is just trying to, you know, manage herself somehow. Yes, yes. 
So more, many of you have said many things. Let's go what I took. Yes. Uh, why the slide is not going ahead? Yeah. So I took, you know, the weakness and breathlessness which she was experiencing. The weakness was there with every symptom she was feeling, oh, I am weak. Anything I listen to, I am weak. For breathing, I am weak. For what all she said, see? Weakness, breathlessness on talking, difficulty in standing, tremors, fear of falling, not able to walk, feel I will fall, energy not at all. So weakness was very prominent. And how it was in three, four days, what all she has developed with fever, heat and this weakness, sudden weakness with breathlessness. Fever with heat, with no perspiration, Tremors with weakness as if will fall. Thirstlessness. Taste bitter. Sleeplessness with fearfulness. Fear of darkness and loneliness. Fear with heaviness, with tearfulness, with constriction in chest. Cough with weakness and breathlessness. So this weakness and breathlessness was accompanying every complaint she had. Her physical general Sleep with fearfulness, thirstlessness, weakness, fever, high heat Heroine sensation Baba. with no perspiration. When the thing is okay, you have got something, now what to do? Where to look for this? And the easiest thing is we should use our what tools. And yes, for repertory, it can be Kent repertory. It can be the repertory which you feel very comfortable with. It might be what all repertory one we feel comfortable with. Okay, complete is an extension of Kent and I generally happen to open complete repertory for when the generals are prominent. And yes, any guess of remedy? Anybody want to say about anything on the remedy? Belladonna, Stremonium, Stanum met. Belladonna is very chilly. Hmm? Belladonna will like to cover themselves with heat, chilly. Stremonium, fear. Bryonia, thirstless. She is very thirstless, though there is dryness. Phosphorus, I don't know why phosphorus. Gelsamium, because she said I will fall. Sensation of falling, weakness, listening to bad news. That's why gelsamium, okay. Aconite has sudden fear of death. Sudden fear of death will be aconite. Suddenness, falsetilla for bitter taste, okay. Ars iod for being specific. Arsenic iod. Nux mosqueta, yeah. Nux mosqueta, dryness with thirstlessness. Very good. No? China, weakness. China has loss of vital fluids. No, she is not perspiring. China has periodicity, loss of vital fluids. Or arsenic album. Arsenic will be very restless. You know, yeah, the, uh, the time she said in the night I am not able to sleep that time modality is of arsenic but this is again thirstless yes calcarea phos calcarea phos okay. pulsatilla you have to tell me why natrum mure why natrum mure <laughs> you have to write also the answer why natrum mure okay Dr. Neelam okay so let's see I search in the repertory and yeah. Hey, sorry, 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 sorry. Yes. So the symptoms which were taken were generality is weakness sudden, generality is weakness excessive, perspire as if about to, but no moisture appears. Fear, fever, heat. Burning, heat, internal, taste, bitter, 
inflammation lung pneumonia collapse with inflammation bronchial tube bronchitis chest motion aggravation cough hacking chest trembling chest operation mind anxiety respiration difficult anxious with mind fear alone being darkness and mind fear alone being solitude of mind fear bed alone of being okay then i saw in the chest inflammation bronchial tubes bronchitis inflammation influenza in bronchial tubes collapse with inflammation pneumonia collapse with chest motion aggravation very much like dionia no least motion she was not able to stand dryness operation trembling hacking cough yes and again something came up okay let's see what was it can you tell me what was it chat could i go i'm not able to see the chats okay yeah so chats i'm not why i'm not able to see your chats Okay, where the chats have gone, I'm not able to see. Let me uncover the name of the remedy which I chose to give her. So, what you feel? What I must have given her? What I must have given her? Ah, uh, Harleen, why I'm not able to see the chats? Uh, Ma'am, you can try putting it on full full screen and then going ah, back. Ah, I'll just yeah, message yeah. you on. Yeah, I saw the chat. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Arsenic is fine. Covers most of the critical symptoms. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Arsenic is fine. Covers most of the critical symptoms. Okay. Okay. But let's see what happened. <laughs> when i go ahead one second when i saw into chest symptoms you know there i saw yes this is what i saw so the remedy which was given was you rightly said some of you you know all four remedies were suggested by this group belladonna arsenic phosphorus pulsatilla see pulsatilla is there but you know the most remedy which was covering things was camphora okay and that suddenness of camphora sudden weakness with no perspiration dry collapse we say no camphora which belongs to magnoliaceae family and what she was telling ki i feel very fearful in the night you know confusion bewilderment strange everything is as if she is in a strange place so it, it is you know somebody said nux mosqueta you know dryness the same family of nux mosqueta is the family magnoliaceae to which camphora belongs to the acute miasm somebody had said aconite acuteness of aconite like suddenness feeling isolated and not part of life you know and collapse fainting stupefied these are the features of this family which are represented in an acute way in camphora so if we receive camphora sudden and complete prostration of the vital forces with great coldness of external surface this is the materia medica of camphora attack come on suddenly sudden sinking of strength as if they feel they are left in unfamiliar place all by herself this is what she was experiencing in the hospital surrounding seems strange look for familiarity okay ghar ki yaad aa rahi thi it was not with respect to she was worrying about the family but it was like my god kahan pe aake mujhe rakh diya hai idhar dar idhar here it is so fearful it is all dark my god i'm so weak i'm not able to talk not able to walk how will i survive whether i will survive or not uh i have a small clipping this is the follow up but i want to show you know this was the patient who was uh, you know just have a 
क्या होता है खड़े रहे तो ऑन द सेकेंड डे अनफॉर्चुनेटली आई वॉज नॉट एबल टू क्लिक हर यू नो पुट हर साउंड ऑन बिकॉज आई रिकॉर्डेड दिस ऑन द फोन प्यास लगता है क्या प्यास लग रहा है so you have to from my questions you have to come to know mu mein taste kaisa hai abhi mu ka taste yeah i hmm i'm so sorry that the... ichha hota hai kya khane ka wagaira zuban dikhao zuban dikhao hmm acha theek hai aur raat ko neend laga kya You, you have to learn lips reading yeah but she was much better in 24 hours pasina aata hai kidhar aata pasina zyada yeah she started perspiring after came for yeah. a 1m6 hourly to chadar nahi mangta aapko chadar nahi lene ka ha huh? somebody said arsenic she didn't wanted any covering she wanted in spite of the heat yeah. ha na aapne bola bahut garmi hota hai aapko ha ha so this was her follow up Yeah. शरीर का शरीर कैसा है हाथ लगाने पे शरीर कैसा है गरम है कि कैसा है so, अभी थकान में कैसा लग रहा थकान बहुत कम है ना गुड अच्छा है बहुत अच्छा है स्मेल अभी आप लो खुराक कुछ बदला होगा तो मैं बताती हूँ यस yes. so i wanted to share this was the patient because ek second how do i go harlin back to my ppt uh, so ma'am if we close this uh, window this okay uh, audio video then she yeah so after camphora 1 and 6 hourly after three doses she felt much better as breathlessness had decreased substantially with no more need of oxygen externally she was feeling like eating and drinking drinking water slept well so could not feel any fear cup decreased quite a lot energy wise almost 60% better and overall fresh feeling follow up to uh she was much better slept well this is after every day i used to call and take her follow up huh? this is the third second after 24 hours this after 48 hours no fear feeling good today walked in the ward as weakness has decreased with no more breathlessness now the taste in mouth is normal so feel like eating drinking water and i'm feeling very good follow up on third day want to go home as feeling quite better doctor not on third day might be this is after four days or so doctor decided to discharge as x ray was all, had almost come to normal i talked with the pulmonologist because that was march 2020 that was the early first you know how incidents how our uh, we all started coming positive in india it was early that stage and uh, that stage of this pandemic so i talked with pulmonologist he was quite happy with the introduction of homeopathic medicines as patient progress faster towards uh. recovery he suggested to conduct homeopathy study okay. trials in their hospital to assess the effects of homeopathy on covid positive patients so it's very important how we choose our remedy and how we help our patients to come to uh, how the recovery happens with the right remedies right remedies with the right intention to heal them you know and what all we can do for them in our best capacity so during the first wave bewildered fear feeling panic collapse breathlessness anguish positivity kuch nahi hoga mujhe aise kaise ho sakta hai india mein ye infection this will not come in india might be this is some rumor might be this is you know and being very positive or even if it happens people seem cheerful or positive also this was also one of the symptom and this taste tastelessness or taste bitter so during the first wave this is how it was where camphora was prescribed as a uh, um, genus epidemicus with other remedies of course the indicated remedy but this kind of state was seen and this was my uh, one of the case which i witnessed and this remedy helped it and in the second wave also though there was in second wave more there were few more symptoms like uh, un 
you know no belief as if i i have got covid or too much worry about finances and how will things happen and too much panic because the second wave came see the right angle too much panic of not getting hospitals and everything and here people panic like anything i'm going to die in that phase also camphora has helped in the acute presentation so let me go ahead so while we are selecting on the basis of pqrs we don't have to forget the generals the whole the key nodes the pqrs the characteristic are the crystallization of the whole okay and especially in acute you know we have to be very careful while selecting the remedy and then confirming it through our materia medica and through our literature let's go to the next case uh this is the case i saw in august uh any questions here or somebody said camphora is thirsty camphora is not thirsty it can be thirsty 1m prescribed 6 hourly for how many days it was prescribed till her hospital stay it was prescribed for 4 to 5 days and later it was done bd and gradually waved off but initially she was being given you know for 4 days regularly yes should i go on the next case yes ma'am we have no questions for this yeah. one so case 2 case of cough with least on least talking this patient was not able to talk little also used to talk the cough used to come not able to talk at all myalgia with profound weakness pains are so much as if the body is being eaten up from inside no energy at all aversion to food nausea from any smell from any smell i have nausea even for the thought of food it gives me nausea feverishness with chilliness more in night followed by perspiration desire to rest yet don't feel restful with sensitivity to least noise prefers warm drinks so totality of characteristics is the totality of the case or is the pqrs this was not a collapse like state but there seemed effort here there was no hypoxia in the earlier case there was of she the patient was on oxygen and there was on hypoxia too here there was no hypoxia though so much of physical agony fever he used to get once a day it was to go till 101 99 to 101 it used to happen twice once in the night by 1 130 and in the evening 6 pm or so 6 pm oxygen saturation was 96 in spite of so much of weakness physically he was having so much of pains but saturation i was checking it was 96 there was anguish due to pain and weakness again taste was bitter waterfall so what do you suggest here any suggestions on remedy any suggestions on characteristics oh again i'm not able to see the chat basically i'm interested in chatting with you all yeah chat is fine in the chats anything you want to take as characteristics in the second case Come on, fast. Should I go back so that you can pick up from here? 
somebody said stannum met for the earlier case or right now yeah stannum met how are the stannum met has lot of discharges no the cup is with full of chest hollow and yes the weakness stannum met is a very good suggestion only thing and the saliva no the cough test the taste of the cough is sweetish in test stannum as if coughing through a barrel and oh, oh, as if it is all hollow tripti says arsenic album yeah anything more acid fos acid fos has what desire for what is acid for desire for fruit and juices weakness with desire for fruit and juices arsenic album arsenic album very good here there is nausea please show symptoms again uh let me shift this how do i shift the chat box yeah yeah okay so should i go ahead very good suggestions have come and i am happy you are all awake and attentive so let me show you how the remedy was covered you know which remedy covered it all the remedy which covered it all the characteristics you know the weakness the breathlessness these were the generals but you know stomach nausea odors for it was not only the food but any odor used to also give nausea so this was quite peculiar nausea food smell of food thinking of isn't it colchicum autumnal we have we have sepia we have coculus we have arsenic taste metallic he 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 told about on and off about tasting metallic as if he is tasting some metal hearing acute i don't i don't know i have shared with you this thing he was it was too acute for him to go to sleep he said everything i am able to hear it is too acute hearing weakness standing aggravation i am not able to stand also perspiration midnight after food and drinks warm drinks ameliorated him what all little what all he had was he preferred warm drinks otherwise there was nausea for any smell even the thought of food okay yeah there are other symptoms you know but here this are few characteristics i chose to see what is coming up okay and then i felt arsenic covers rest of the thing also nausea feverishness warm drinks midnight aggravation most of the things were very well covered with arsenic now you know fear as if being eaten up from inside feeling so what is this i wanted to understand this also what is this an arsenic you know arsenic is a what it is an acid acid will have weakness acid will have prostration arsenic 1m was given 6 hourly patient was recovering on the second day he felt better but it was gradual in 48 hours thus potency was raised to 10m and this helped the patient the fourth row of periodic table arsenic is on the right side and there is delusion as if everything is being he is losing as if he needs to control the loss and he has to control this loss as much as possible as if you are drowning and you have to control you have to be there what all effort you do lot of effort to get back you know so this is how structure has been attacked and eroded that is their delusion eroding damaging corroding so then i understood ki oh it can be related to that way about whatever he was telling ki i am too weak to preserve it is so much of weakness just a second sometimes you know the slide doesn't go now just see again 
Se cuffs with least talking, not able to talk at all, myalgia with profound weakness, pain so much as if body being eaten from inside, no energy at all, aversion to food, to smell, feverishness with chilliness, more in the night, followed by perspiration, desire to rest, yet don't feel restful. Bryonia will be restful. Arsenic doesn't feel restful. Here he was very sensitive to noise. But they are restless and that also it will, oh no, oh no. Ah, ah. There was no, you know, that rest was not there though he desired. That there is a symptom, no? Physically they want to desire, but, uh, desire to rest, but mentally they are not able to rest. That's what it was. So this remedy helped, but I have to go to the same remedy, but a very higher potency and that helped. Okay, so it's important. If the remedy is really work covered very well, at times the potency needs, you need to go higher or as per the state, because if the state is matching more, that's why I, in this case, I went higher. This was his COVID report. See, his chest X-ray was patchy in homogeneous opacities in bilateral lower lung. Okay. Yet he, he was at home. We did not do his HRCT because he said, no, I don't, I can't go for any scan. Please manage me here somehow. And today, since there was a case presentation, I he gave the follow-up. He's sharing a story of my healing from COVID. I started my test with COVID on 23rd, 7th, along with three other members of my family. Severe cough, fever up to 101, and debilitating weakness. See, he has written, his, this is his handwriting. <laughs> See, there is a structure in the handwriting and which were, uh, you know, how it is systematic, structured. Can you say something from the handwriting also? Quite systematic, no? At least I can I can say it's quite a system. Naksvamika. Naksvamika has, is very close because of sensitivity to noise. Okay? Very meticulous from the handwriting. Awful taste in the mouth with everything smelling so odd and repulsive that eating was impossible. Not even water was drinkable, which started leading to dehydration and weakness. Severe bouts of heavy cough from chest was occurring. Even by uh, just turning in bed, speaking was impossible. You know, motions added to it. Overall sense of depression and helplessness take over and you wonder what next. Getting better seemed impossible and one starts feeling that life is ebbing away. My God, he wonderfully he described, <laughs> you know, challenges. And then he spoke about Dr. Sonali and past concern action. You know, their encouragement and belief in their treatment was most assuring part on time comes and all this, you know, and how he's, I wrote this note, the whole episode seems a fairy tale where heroes, perform impossible tasks all because of the faith in themselves and finally save the day for better tomorrow. But fairy tales can also become true when they become true stories that heal. Yeah. So, so that is how we can really help our patients by doing our best with the tool what we have is our science. And this patient was only on homeopathy and he was helped well. Anybody want to say anything? How much time I have, Harleen? Uh, Ma'am, we have the last five minutes. Last five minutes, okay. Yeah. So, okay, I will share one more case, okay? Since we have five minutes or we should go for question answers. After that question answers, no? After that five minutes? Uh, yes, ma'am, we can do another case and then do the Q&A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, case of 30-year-old female. So she was, is a hospitalized case. She had fever with chills, with severe pain in the chest, hyperacidity with lots of bilious vomiting, weakness with projectile vomiting, breathlessness with profound sleepiness, Anorexia with sleepiness, crampy pain in the left side of the back, lower extremity and calves, severe constipation, sleep profound, craving for orange and sweet lime. 
Ah. So tell me. On the chats, you can go on. This was the presentation. That's what. This was the presentation of the case. Whenever fever used to come, it used, used to be with chills to severe pain in the chest. And she had hyperacidity. It was difficult for her to give her symptoms. Yes. Are you all there? I need to see acid fast. Yes, because there is now the craving for fruit has come. <laughs> okay, sweet lime. Yes. What is not there in acid first? At times when we come to remedy, we should see what is not there, not fitting in acid first. Write that. What is not fitting? Yes? Some more suggestions? I want an awake audience. So, let me go ahead. Constipation, yes. Severe constipation. She was, yes, projectile vomiting. Veratrum album. Veratrum album will have with projectile vomiting, profuse sweat on the forehead. Phosphorus. Because of craving for, why phosphorus? Fever with, I don't know why phosphorus. Let's go, let's. Phosphorus, uh, antim tart. Antim tart will chest will be as if filled with phlegm and the person is not able to throw it out. Antim tart will help there with hypoxia, with perspiration, with tremendous weakness. But the chest will, the rattle of the chest will be quite audible in antim tart tart. Yes. Any more suggestion? Yes. So, anaxia, opium, Shri, Shri Vidya, opium. Why opium? Phosphorus, vomit, heartburn, juices, thirst. Okay. Heartburn, ameliorated by cold drinks and phosphorus, will desire for cold fruit juices. Specifically, eyes desire for comatose. Yes. Yes, very nice, very good suggestion. Sleepiness with constipation, very good. Desire for ice cream? No, she didn't had ice cream. Desire for belladonna. Why, be why belladonna? Why belladonna? Because of the heat, craving for orange. In belladonna, there is craving for lemonade. And why belladonna? Only for fever? Fever with sleepiness, yet not able to sleep is belladonna. Desire to sleep, but not able to sleep. That is belladonna. Cuprum. Cuprum, why? Because of the projectile vomiting, the spasm. Okay, antim tart. No, antim tart, I told you. The chest will in antim tart will be full. Belladonna for inflammation. So we cannot go only like that. So specific, we cannot narrow down opium. Yes. So let me share with you. Yeah. So here it was more of, you know, fever with chills with severe pains in chest. Pain so much she was not able to bear with hyperacidity, lot of bilious vomiting. And I, what, did, what is it said? Weakness with projectile. Projectile vomiting comes with a cramp, you know, sudden crampy kind. Somebody said like cuprum. You see, breathlessness with profound sleepiness. You know, very few are able to relate these two. Anorexia with sleepiness. Crampy pain. See, on you know, crampy pain in the back, in the lower extremities, in the calf. Sleep profound and comatose. It was difficult for her to keep awake. It was like, you have COVID. What has happened to you? No, I want to sleep. Carbo wedge. Carbo wedge will be also sleepy, but it is more than sleep. It is too much of hypoxia leads to the state of, you know, higher carbon in the body. And that's why it is 
सिंकिंग पेशेंट वी से कार्बोवेज यू नो एज इफ कैडेवर लाइक क्यूप्रम चेलिडोनियम चेलिडोनियम लिवर स्पेसिफिक नो वी कैन बी सो स्पेसिफिक वेन वी हैव सो मेनी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक इथुजा इथुजा विल बी ओनली वॉमिटिंग यू नो यस सो लेट मी शेयर विथ यू वॉट आई गेव here the pqrs what i saw was extreme pain on one side and the other side was extreme sleepiness and dullness okay she was not aware of what is happening to her that sort of dullness that sort of anesthetic and on one side extreme pain so this was a indication of the plant family papaverisi where there are the chelidonium is the remedy from papaverisi family we know chelidonium has pain in the tip of the scapula lower tip intense pain at physical and mental level along with sleepiness and that's why somebody is you know uh, this sleepiness of papaverisi family and uh, the remedy which is very good for profound sleepiness or sleeplessness from papaverisi with spasms colic and convulsions you know this is the characteristic in the these are the features of the remedies of this family you know and see we have sanguinaria here we have uh, uh, your uh, somebody said chelidonium here we have sang uh, we have opium here so i have to see what was the thing which will cover the most of her symptoms and then give the remedy and then i went and saw Ki, okay is it this remedy let me see the repertory so when i saw abdomen i don't say is this audio setting yeah abdomen pain gripping cramp colic fartak repertory bewildered things look strange loss of sense of location fartak repertory sleep comatose deep chill violent during sleepiness pneumonia in vomiting bilious stomach pain cutting pit in the pit of stomach violent pain retching gagging gagging excitement emotional aggravation cramps see you said like cupram she had crampy vomiting projectile bile convulsive spasmodic forcible projectile comatose you know so i when you come to a remedy which is that which is covering this was all her totality these were her characteristic of her state and the remedy which was covering all this was opium opium was given in 10m state 6 hour opium was given in this state in 10m 6 hourly and patient's requirement for oxygen came down okay from in 24 hours from 15 liter to 6 liter and on the 6 day to 4 liter and by 7 day on room air she responded very well and you know she was saved actually it was difficult uh, you know because she was in hospital and there was already everything was going on yet patient was not recovering and if we have the remedy which matches most of the features in the case it becomes easy for the patient for us to take out the patient from a depleted state so summary is see what is very significant watch physical listen and listen and listen well okay and sorry observe while you listen and ask the patient to describe because through the patients only we are going to get the case we have to ask them to describe till we really get what is absolutely how is the crystallization of the symptom how is the symptom no at times we are bit hurried in prescribing including me i am a very hurried hurried prescriber so pqrs can be pandemic symptoms total new state acute totality or constitutional okay chat somebody is saying something in the chat ma'am repertorial chart yeah wait mm -hmm. Uh, sorry. 
या टोरियल चार्ट बीविल्डर्ड थिंग्स लुक स्ट्रेन स्लीप पोमेटोज डीप चिल ड्यूरिंग स्लीपीनेस निमोनिया एंड वॉमिटिंग डिलियस पेन कटिंग आई शेयर विथ यू दस थिंग्स ओ पी एम कवर्ड इट ऑल वेरी वेल एंड देन यू सी यू नो सो इफ यू कैन गो थ्रू योर स्टडी ऑफ योर फैमिली और थ्रू यू नो स्टडी यू नो स्टडी ऑफ योर रूब्रिक्स और स्टडी स्टडी ऑफ योर रेपर्ट You, these are all the tools to help us to reach uh, the remedy which will cover most of the thing you know and yes so this is how i'm trying to help i do try to help my patients by going and understanding the peculiarity of the state because in covid it is like acute so at times constitutional is required at times absolutely the symptoms of pandemic are there that's why i shared with you the case of camphora at times you know you have to see how it is acute like arsenic you know acute uh, in the where he told it is absolutely ebbing away from me in the even in the um, as a testimonial he wrote how life was ebbing away from me and yes so should i say stop share and i should there should be question answers uh is picking a top four problematic symptoms can be considered no uh, what i am saying can be considered for snapshot prescriptions in critical stage when patient is not mentally prepared for answering i yes yes because you know when they are very critical no the th the vital force will throw out everything what is there so uh, very very characteristics comes up so that way uh, that, it that becomes system. easy but we should we should Are focus radio? on what is the okay, intensity of symptoms also 3 plus 4 plus you know how it is how intensity ah, of the symptoms and what are the symptoms phute yeah. hai but we you, we should take the whole case because it takes time to even for us to understand because people tell breathlessness weakness which is very general how is the weakness and then after being with them for a while then they tell him i am not even able to stand doctor uh, it should come the whole thing should come out in front of us then our remedies and our simple remedies can be very helpful yes any more questions gelsamium somebody had said no gelsamium has got tremendous vertigo with drooping of eyelids sleepiness thirstlessness eyelids are droopy and pain occipital pain chilly feeling the spine is very chilly with no yeah it's very close those are the mask high concentration mask and venturi mask these are the mask when the patients need more oxygen you know they put them on very high concentration mask and once their oxygen requirement comes down in the hospital that is how they shift from one mask to other it's not only the liters of oxygen but the mask are also very important thank you kaira kalra thank you kalra anything more anything more you want from me we can definitely in future plan for uh, event do series of remedy required or when in acute remedy picture changes does this happen in covid yeah yeah of course a picture can change and we have to be open for changing our remedy we should be very alert in covid you know morning evening you should take the follow ups of the patient that is again very important i personally do call my patients and ask them because they forget once they feel better they generally don't report or uh, we need to be very alert about the 
doing their investigations too though it becomes very difficult and they generally tell with homeopaths they are like we don't want to do this and that but we should be getting done the physical investigations too yes yeah i enjoyed use of plant family so what all we have learned over thing so what we can utilize this learning what all we learn from our teachers and you know our colleagues it is there for utilization for our patients and i thank uh, this platform dr rajan so much for helping us to you know build ourselves and to be good homeopaths and to help our to help the society ultimately which repertory to use for covid see let it be a covid you know it ultimately we are handling it like an acute presentation so uh, rather than going for any you know what if the generals are more again go for go so you can start from simple as kent you know what we are used to we can put in the it the characteristics you know if it is very particular things are coming up accordingly go for particular you know where those are mentioned well like artax repertory can be used uh, some books for kingdoms and sub classes there is not book on sub classes not yet come but you can attend the lectures on it uh, books on kingdom the plant kingdom by dr rajan 1 2 3 volumes is, a, is explained very well materia medica ma'am the session is about to conclude yes yes thank you harleen thank you all of you for patient listening and to the this platform for creating such nice event where we could participate and share our knowledge or what all we have learned you know this is more of sharing from each other and learning from each other thank you thank you so much ma'am it was so beautifully said by you and i think the amalgamation of pqrs observations plant families repertory materia medica everything together in one prescription uh, and the importance of that in every prescription whether it be covid or non covid is very very vital so thank you so much ma'am for sharing your experience i really hope like our participants really want to learn and see more cases by you i think we will have more sessions and lectures by you and uh, thank you every much everyone so much for attending the session and if you have any questions or queries you can write to us and we will try to address them about the plant families and kingdoms we have sessions and lectures by dr shankaran you all can get in touch with us regarding that and we will see you tomorrow thank you so much have a great day thank you bye thank you ma'am bye bye